afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Lucy Kibe. I'm the program director of the PEA, Charles Drew University PA program. And I am delighted to welcome all of you to our beautiful campus to celebrate these beautiful people. Um, before uh, we get started, I want to recognize alumni um, in, the, on the, in the crowd to come and sit up front. So if you are an alumni of the PA program, please come and sit up front. All right, they're coming. Some of them are shy. All right. So today we are actually celebrating two groups of graduates. We have these 25 amazing graduates here. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you about them, but let me start by telling you about um, a different group that we are celebrating here as well. So out of 150,000 PAs currently practicing in the United States, less than 1% of them identify as black men. Less than 1% of them. So at CDU, we have taken the, the challenge to change that, okay? So earlier this year, we invited 12 black men from across the country to be part of a mentoring program that we called Age PA Program. And so those, out of those 12, three of them were not ready to apply for PA school. They were still in undergrad getting ready. The nine of them um, that were ready to apply, applied. Every single one of them was invited to an interview and seven of them have been accepted to peer programs across the country. So we congratulate the class of 22 edge PA group. Okay, now back to you guys. So 27 months ago, you guys welcomed us to your living rooms for the short white coat ceremony. And uh, at that time, we told you it's gonna, it was gonna be a difficult program. It was gonna be very rigorous. You did not believe us until you encountered Dr. Martins <laughs> and other faculty. In the last 27 months, we have put you through more than 208 exams, quizzes, uh, checklists in addition to other assignments. As a group, you have logged more than 2,000 service learning hours around our community. And listen to this, as a group, you have logged about 11,000 patient encounters during your clinical year. So basically we dropped you into an ocean and you were drowning. You tried to come up for air, we pushed you back in. And today you have made it to the finish line. So congratulations. And we couldn't have done this without the support of our amazing faculty and staff. Okay. Um, your family and friends, okay? And our university leadership who work very hard in the background to make sure that our program is a success. And we will be hearing from uh, some of them today. We have a slight change um, in the program. And so we are going to start off with our keynote speaker. Um, and so I'm going to invite Charity to come up and introduce our keynote speaker to us. I see only one person was excited about the keynote speaker. I know better. I know, I know you guys better than that. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. I want to appreciate all of you for being here. Congratulations to my cohorts and classmates. Congratulations to our professors. You did what you needed to do. Thank you for not letting us drown. I'm very excited, I'm very humble to be standing here this morning to introduce our keynote speaker for today. And the reason is, uh, for my excitement is, I'm anticipating what I'm going to hear today. 
Because in the little peek I had into her biography, I was able to see that she is one of those that have positive professional footprints, both in the profession as well as even in the community, and doing what CDU stands for. As we gather here today, one thing is clear. The determinants of our socioeconomic status, health, and a whole lot of stuff is dependent on our zip codes. And when you're a kid that was, is yet to be born, you see that's kind of unfair and that creates disparity. And here at CDU, there's no place that is more manifest than this very campus that was established as the dust of the Watts riot of 1965 was settling. CDU was born with the mission and a purpose to obliterate disparities, disparity in health. A lot of people think is all race is not, not one into, it's not about capacity, it's about opportunity. And that's what CDU stands for. And SJS, like CDU, was birthed out of the unfortunate George Floyd incident of 19, uh, 2020 by our class of 2021, my mentor. So the, and the essence of social justice society is to do those positive footprints, is to go out in the community, make our presence known. To educate on health, we pre-screen. It's, it's not that people don't want to get healthy. Sometimes they don't know where to go. Sometimes they don't have the support. Sometimes they don't have the right people. And we sometimes they don't even know they need help. So SJS go partners with churches, partners with the community, with boots on ground, knocking on doors to get COVID tests and all that stuff to breach that gap in disparity. I'm very excited to hear from you today, ma'am. <laughs> I can't wait. Professor Catherine Reed has those footprints. She is the founder and the president of the National Society of Black Physician Assistants, NSBPA. Disparity. You guys heard Dr. Kibe. She received her master's in science in PA studies from the University of Pittsburgh in 2016. She has practiced in both family and internal medicine in Pittsburgh. She holds a faculty appointment in the University of Pittsburgh Department of PA Studies. Hap Sorry. A PA Studies of Pittsburgh Department of PA Studies hybrid program where she is an assistant professor and vice chair for equity, inclusion, and community engagement. Catherine is also the member of Pennsylvania Society of PA Health, PA's Health Disparity Committee. Most recently, she was nominated for several AAPA awards and was awarded the Rising Star from the University of Pittsburgh School of Health and Rehab Sciences. I want everybody to get excited. As we call up the keynote speaker for the day. You guys don't look excited. <laughs> Ma'am, it's all yours. I have big shoes to fill. Okay. Oh, hi everyone. Hello. Oh, this brings me so much joy. Can you hear me okay? I'm a little short, so let me make sure. Okay. Oh, Charity, thank you for that very kind introduction. I appreciate you. And thank you all for allowing me to be here today. I'm very, very grateful. I would also be remiss if I did not extend gratitude to David, thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> I would like to start this speech out by extending my true and heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. Getting into PA school is hard. Completing PA school is hard. And yet, here you are, completing this worthwhile endeavor. Congratulations. Mm 
It was not long ago that I was in your place. 2016 was not that long ago. Seated in a room filled with friends and family, peers who became friends and family, faculty and staff, feeling relieved to have made it this far, exhausted from the last push of exams, summative evaluations, whew, paperwork, and pants prep, and also wondering where the last two years had gone somehow, right? Being present in this moment is important. I want to ask each of you and your families to take a deep breath in and exhale. You're welcome to close your eyes or look down toward the floor. I want you to feel your feet on the ground, feel the warmth of your peers sitting next to you. I want you to feel the love, the excitement, and the pride emanating from your family, your friends, and the faculty in the room. I want you to exhale and then inhale in all of that joy and goodness on your next deep breath. On your exhale, breathing out any of the stressors that can wait till tomorrow. Thank you for walking through that with me. You are welcome to open your eyes if they are shut. I bet you couldn't tell I also teach yoga. <laughs> But you deserve to soak up this experience today and to fully immerse yourselves in this big moment. So now that we are grounded and oxygenated, let's begin. So when I was asked to speak to you today, my first thought was a resounding, no, not because I didn't want to meet all of you or have the privilege of speaking to you, but because I struggle moment to moment with imposter syndrome and acknowledging that my words and my experience have value. I share this truth with all of you today because it aligns directly with my five brief suggestions about how new PAs can advance diversity in the PA profession. These suggestions are gleaned solely from my experience in the PA profession. As a clinically practicing PA, the president of the NSBPA, a mentor to many, and a new PA faculty member in a program similar to your own. So, number one, show up and be your authentic self. In a world that asks us to shrink or to become complicit in unjust and inequitable systems, be the patient advocate and PA that does not. Patients will see you. They will identify similarities based on your physical appearance or the perception of shared identities and will entrust you with details about their life, health history, and concerns. They will ask you questions that typically stay in the furthest reaches of their brain when they see you and trust you. They will ask you what you do, what being a PA means, how you became a clinician, how to improve their health, and inevitably, whether you are going to be a doctor one day. Every time, <laughs> oh, every time. In these moments, your ability to listen and educate from a place of kindness, love, and empathy will make all the difference. Number two. Share your story. Representation matters. Your existence as a new PA matters. And so does your story. Not just the story we share on Instagram or to people we want to impress. I mean the story that provides context and details for what pre-PA students should not do when they find themselves in your shoes. When you share your story from a place of honesty and vulnerability, especially with folks who want to be you one day, you will provide a firmer foundation another rung on the ladder that you are building for them to climb up, making the journey more straightforward and streamlined, less painful, less stressful. Our communities and the folks around us will not know how they can be PAs or that they can be PAs until they hear it from us and see you. However, we always and also want folks to be adequately prepared to follow our footsteps. This requires that we release the mindset that those who follow us must suffer through the same adversity, in order to reach the same or greater heights. What support and knowledge do you wish that you had? Can you find ways to share that knowledge? Maybe that means on social media, doesn't work for me, but I'm also an old millennial. Or maybe it's in a more structured way. And that brings me to number three, become a mentor. Many of you have had informal or formal mentors in this process. 
Think of the people who reviewed your personal statements, discussed the pros and cons of one PA program versus another, or provided you with emotional support and affirmation as you applied to PA school and over the last two years. Mentors guide you around obstacles and over hurdles by equipping you with hard-earned wisdom, knowledge, and tried and true strategies. As a new PA, you can become an informal or a formal mentor for pre-PA, pre-health, or current PA students. You can provide support to your mentees as they navigate the path you just took. Pouring into folks who want to be a PA and are seeking out mentorship from a person who represents their specific cultural, personal, or social identities, who represents, oops, excuse me, is a privilege. I firmly believe that mentorship for us, by us, will continue to make the PA profit profession a more diverse, safe, and inclusive place for everyone. Number four, join organizations that amplify your voice and what is important to you. Joining organizations that sound like alphabet soup, AAPA, NCCPA, PAEA, NSBPA, CAPA, and what other, any other state organization that you might decide to join. This will afford you opportunities to connect with PAs in your specialty or geographic region, develop leadership skills, share your knowledge, and learn even more alongside your colleagues. These organizations may also offer more structured or formal mentorship opportunities for you. Within these spaces, you will have the ability to join committees and work groups that will continue to shape and diversify the world of PA education and clinical practice. You are important. Number five, continue to learn and become a champion. We will always have a vested interest in obtaining updated and detailed knowledge about topics that impact us and the people we love. We also all have biases that shape how we engage with other humans. This is a gentle reminder that we need to continue expanding our knowledge of other cultures, identities, and the variety of intersections that exist in those spaces too. Intersectionality specifically needs to remain at the forefront of our minds. None of us are just our race, our ethnicity, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability status, etc. We are multifaceted humans who sit at the intersection of many of these identities and spaces. The collective community we serve is filled with humans who also embody those intersections. Remember to continually do the inner work required to unlearn your biases, glean knowledge from additional resources, and engage with everyone with cultural humility at the core of each interaction, especially as you learn about groups of humans with whom you do not identify. Our patients, our communities, and peers deserve to have a champion for their humanity whether they are in the room or not. It is our duty to continue to educate ourselves to be that person. Remember, even as a graduate, you will be further honing and developing your clinical skills. The same is required of your cultural humility and awareness. Lastly, I want to gently remind you that you are a new PA. The five suggestions I just shared are meant to spark your interest and give you ideas for the future. You do not need to actively pursue every single item right now. I will say that again. You do not need to actively pursue every single item right now. Much like at the beginning of PA school when you thought that you'd have plenty of time for all of the extra activities, the beginning of your career is similar. Please remember that burnout is real. If I had a sixth suggestion for you, it would be to remember that you are the most important part of all of the all of the suggestions I just made. Ensuring that your mental, physical, and emotional well-being are prioritized is necessary. We cannot function optimally and care for other humans if we are not caring for ourselves. In one of my very favorite books, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCowan, there's a chapter titled Protect the Asset. In this chapter, McCowan discusses that if you are unable to protect yourself, the asset, you cannot possibly be as productive and impactful as you want to be. That framing has altered the way that I live. As a perpetual, always says yes, person, recovering perfectionist, and someone who's trying to learn flexibility within her type A tendencies, probably like many of you, the contents of this chapter remind me that when I say no to an opportunity that does not fully align with my goals at that time, I'm opening myself up to say yes to another opportunity. 
an opportunity for which I now have the bandwidth to participate. Much like you're all fully participating today. For me, those spaces in my schedule might allow me to take a walk outside, call a friend, cook a meal, or simply watch Netflix. Things that my brain and body need. Well, maybe not need Netflix, right? To decompress and continue to show up daily to do this work. You are here for a reason. The long white coat you put on today holds responsibility, but it is also a visible reminder of how capable, smart, and driven you are. Over the years, you will put on your white coat countless times. This moment of excitement and pride may fade, becoming a mundane part of 4 a.m. wake ups and long commutes. But when you get to that point, I want to gently remind you to pause and stand in the mirror before heading to your PA position. In that moment, I want you to remember that you are the most important part of that coat. You are showing up for yourselves, your families, and your communities. You are the change that this profession requires. You are the force that will allow our peers, patients, and future students to see the innovation, inclusivity, and diversity of this profession and the people who sustain it. You will show them that they belong here with us as PA colleagues and friends. Those brief reflections in our mirror will be a reminder on good days and on challenging days that our multifaceted and unique selves can continue to confidently adorn a white coat, drape a stethoscope around our shoulders, and remember that we have the privilege of caring for other humans in a mentally, physically, and emo emotionally safe workplace and world that we are helping to create. In closing, I want to express my gratitude for being able to share space with all of you today. I am so excited to be your colleague. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Should you ever need a person to remind you that you are enough and to tell that whisper or shout of imposter syndrome to hush, you can just call me. Thank you all again and congratulations. Thank you, P.A. Reed. Um, we learned that she got the award for a rising star, but I think she's already a star. What <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are joined today by uh, some members of our university leadership, and I'd like to give them an opportunity to just stand and be recognized because we couldn't have this program without you. So we have our provost, uh, any deans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, and Sylvia, you didn't stand, but you should have. Sylvia Ivy Drew, will you stand, please? The daughter of Charles R. Drew. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And now please help me welcome our president and CEO of Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, Dr. David Carlyle, to give some remarks. Well, thank you, Dr. Kibe. And let me say, this is a great day for the PA profession, and especially a great day for Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science. Congratulations to the PA class of 2022. Well done. Um, You know, this is a uh, auspicious class. This is our fifth master's degree class. Again, congratulations. I want to say that on behalf of everyone at the university, our trustees, our administration that you've heard from, our, um, our faculty, our alumni, our staff, and the students and all the other programs who are so proud of you today. Uh, family members, you might wonder why we're having a graduation ceremony in December. Well, it's because of the unique nature of the PA program, it's a 27-month a program. So these students graduate in the middle of the, uh, the, the academic year and the end of the calendar year. But they're all invited back to come to our commencement next year as well. But I know they're gonna be working hard and it may be difficult, 
So we want to make sure that we celebrate all of them today. You know, um, a special shout out to all the parents, all the loved ones. All the brothers and sisters, all the significant others. <laughs> Um, all the children. Because um, these students wouldn't be here without you. I know that you have sacrificed greatly. Um, and that sacrifice, I know, is meaningful. Um, extra hours, doing all sorts of stuff to get these young people to where they are today. But another thing about this program, this may be our fifth year in the master's degree program for PA, but it's not our fifth year of the PA school at this university. In fact, this university's PA program was the first in the state of California 50, 50 years ago. I'm just remember, reminded of a um, quote that pertains to that history. And this is for all of our graduates today, because you're gonna do this. To see far, you have to stand on the shoulders of giants. And our graduates, our alumni, are the giants whose shoulders you are standing on because they led the creation of the PA profession. And here we are today, you know, 50 years later, and we're welcoming the latest cohort to the PA profession. So again, class of 2022, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Job well done. Looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Carlisle, for your amazing words. Um, I'm truly honored and humbled to stand before you guys uh, this afternoon to celebrate our fifth CDU PA graduating class. Please give a warm uh, hand of welcome for them. So our program um, established standards for recognizing um, achievements of preceptors, community partners, uh, alumni, and students. These awards uh, acknowledge individuals who have exhibited excellence in areas of uh, their discipline, dedication to service, persistence, perseverance, and embody the spirit of CDU. So I'm gonna be giving three awards today. Um, the first award is gonna be the Preceptor of the Year Award. The Preceptor of the Year is an award that um, is given to a preceptor who uh, has demonstrated a commitment to excellence in clinical education of our PA students, who mentors them and who give them instructions. Um, the student spends about 12 months um, at various hospitals and clinics, for example, MLK across the street, um, Sheltering Arms, California Hospital. And the preceptors are very integral in our, in our education curriculum. Um, they provide compassionate and culturally competent um, education to our students. So today we're gonna to be honoring the preceptor of the year to, uh, which was voted by our class of 2022. The preceptor we're going to, uh, that was voted in this year is PA Devin DeHardy. He couldn't be here today, so I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Um, so a little bit about uh, P.A. DeHardy. He's a physician, physician assistant at the Greatest Los Angeles VA Hospital. Uh, he, particip uh, he practiced psychiatry. Students refer to him as uh, P.A. DeHardy. He has an like, exceptional uh, preceptor um, teaching style. He command. Uh, a law for teaching. He has the ability to go beyond the clinical, um, his clinical responsibility to ensure that the student grabs the topics we give them um, so that they can do well on their exams. What is important to note about um, this preceptor is that um, when all the students were given uh, evaluations for all the students, uh, all the other preceptors they've had, they went above and beyond to give extra words of, of, um, of um, respect for, for P.A. Duarte. That's, and majority of the class also voted that he was the preceptor of the year. Um, 
so students um, were extremely uh, appreciative of the, the, the commitment that he provided for learning uh, or for teaching them. Um, and so for that, we want to thank him. All right, so as you guys can tell, I'm not a public speaking person, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> So two more awards. Um, the second award we're going to give to our uh, inspirational alumni um, of the year. So um, this award is designed to recognize uh, a graduate who has um, shown great promise and, and accomplishment and service to the CDU program, PA program. Um, this award spotlights future leaders who show continued potential in the PA profession, a commitment to their community and dedication to the CDU mission. And so two people are gonna receive this award. Um, congratulations, Nicole Muske. <laughs> and the second person is uh, Iso Tihiri. Huh? <laughs> All right, so the second award, um, the second alumni award is uh, a distinguished alumni award. And this distinguished alumni award goes, um, is an honor um, for a highly exceptional alumni who has made an outstanding contribution to the PA program, PA profession, and has demonstrated an, an extraordinary service to the community and to the CDU PA program. Um, the recipient of this award demonstra uh, demonstrates their commitment to the CDU mission in practice and a role model for others to do the same. There's two recipient of this award. The first is uh, P.A. Cecil Walker. And the second is uh, Reverend Wendell Warden. All right, so I'd like to welcome the amazing Dr. Martin on the stage to help me continue. <laughs> Thank you, Zion. I've been asked to present the student awards. But before I go to this script, I just like to free flow a little bit, if it's okay. Okay. I mean, you've heard that this program is difficult and that is no joke. These graduates you see here, they've been baptized in water and they've been baptized by fire. You know, one thing about adversity is that if it doesn't break you, it will make you. So the students that we're gonna be honoring this afternoon did not only survive, they excelled. And it's extremely important for you to listen to me carefully as I describe the reason for the award. So as I call your names, I want you to please stand and be recognized. Our first student award will recognize students who st stood out during the clinical year. The clinical year is when they go away from us and they have to get to know these strangers and learn from them. Their personality and mannerism determines how much they can learn from that person. So you really have to be very skilled socially to maximize clinical rotations. So the first award goes to this student who logged the most patient interaction during a single rotation, Jesse Ken.
The second award goes to a student who logged the most patient interactions during the clinical year. David Anarchy. The next award is the Excellence in Professionalism Award. In healthcare profession and in all profession, professionalism is the soul of business. If you don't have it, you're not gonna go anywhere. This award is presented to a student who exemplifies professionalism, respect, trustworthiness, diversity, Teamwork and learning. Raj Preet Kaur. The next award is the Sir William Osler Award. It's, this award is named after Sir William Osler a Canadian physician who was instrumental in the development of the PA profession. This award goes to a student that exhibits excellence in academics, demonstrates inquisitivity, values inquiry, and will be instrumental in the PA profession. This award is given to David Anaki. The next award is the Maya Angelou Award. The award is named after an American author, screenwriter, and civil rights activist, best known for a 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. This award is presented to someone in the graduating class who exhibit outstanding efforts in community outreach social responsibility, and human rights. This award is given to Charity Asia Mama. The next award is the Wilma Rudolph Award. Wilma Rudolph defied overwhelming odds to establish herself as one of the most decorated US female athletes. The Wilma Rudolph Award is presented to a student who has persevered despite all of the obstacles interfering with their life, proving that they can overcome struggles by identifying factors that may hinder progress. When students enroll in a peer program, as difficult as it is, as challenging as it is, they are not spared from the challenges of life and trials of life. And many, many times, depending on how they've been raised, some of them will buckle and bow out of the program. I am particularly proud of this student because I saw the stresses and the strains. And I'm grateful to God that Degash Fukua is sitting right here with us. At this time, we would like to induct our third class of Pi Alpha students, alumni, and faculty. Pi Alpha is the National Physician Assistant Honor Society organized by the promotion and recognition of both physician assistant students and graduates 
Membership signifies the inductees significant academic achievements and honors them for their leadership, research, community, professional service, and other related activities. Congratulations to our student inductees. As I call your name, please stand and hold your applause until all four of them are standing. Sophia Ramirez. Nazia Ashik. Alvin Leo. Samantha McKenwiz. I'd like to congratulate our faculty inductees. And as I call your name, please stand. So you can be acknowledged, Professor Greta Vine Douglas. And our alumni inductee, who I don't think is here, is Tolu Lokbe Oshiba Fowode. I would like to say something about this particular inductee. She graduated last year. And um, she got a job in Texas. And one night she called me and she said, I did it. I'm like, you did what? <laughs> Apparently she was on call with residents and fellows. And for some reason at about 11.30 or so, the fellows, the intern were all missing in action and a patient coded. And the, she ran to the spot and she ran the code by herself. You know, I'm fond of telling our students something. Just because the cardiology referral is delayed because insurance does not approve, does not mean you can justify that patient's death. Pick up a cardiology book, do what you can do right now for that patient while you're waiting. We have a researcher on this campus, Professor Oguyemi, who does research on retina screening. That research was born out of the fury we experienced collectively when a 38-year-old black man lost both of his sight while waiting to be seen by an ophthalmology in a county facility. You're not trained to make excuses for the inefficiencies of the system. You're trained to take care of the patient. And believe me, that is not as easy as it sounds. There are times you know exactly what to do. But there are forces militating actively against you. And there are times you really have to bite the bullet because you're the only one that can. That patient can't fight. They won't even know where to start. You know exactly where, what the problem is. And only you can help them navigate obstacles. And believe me, there are lots of those. So this award is well placed in Tolu. And I know there are so many of you, you find yourself in Tolu situations all through your career. You might be the only 
thing standing between death and that patient. Don't take it kindly because you know what? If that patient dies of something you could have prevented, you will never forgive yourself. The next award is to our honorary inductee, this friend of the, this great faculty of the university, friend of our program, a man I admire and love so much, he does not really know how much I truly respect him. William Shea. Well, thank you very much. Now I'd like to turn it over to our program director, Dr. Ah. I missed one. My favorite student. <laughs> Our final award is named after our own very one, Charles Audrew, a physician and surgeon who worked to improve techniques for blood storage and developed large scale blood banks in the early World War II, Second World War era. The Dr. Charles Audrew Award goes to a student who is a well-balanced individual who exemplifies the highest level of performance in all areas, life skills, overall wellness, teamwork, academics, clinical skills, and community outreach. Before I announce this student, I want to give you just a little bit of an insight as to why this award is important, especially when you talk about a well-balanced individual. Because our students are trained to serve in under-resourced and underserved communities. And regardless what you left home with, regardless what you encounter on your way to work, you're gonna to have to need a ready shoulder that someone can lean on. I am so delighted, and I'm so sorry that I overlooked this award because this award is given to Carly Callahan. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> well, with that, I bring up Dr. Lucy Kibe to present our last award. Thank you. Don't you just love it when Dr. Martin just freestyles? <laughs> he gives the best speeches that way. I don't even know why we write anything down for him. All right. Um, I'm going to present the last award uh, of the day, and this uh, is the Servant Leadership Award. And the Servant Leadership Award is given to a PA faculty or staff member who has demonstrated servant leader qualities and characteristics in interpersonal relationships, performance, and achievement. The recipient demonstrates the 10 characteristics of a servant leader in practice, including listening, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, commitment to the growth of the people, and building community. The 2022 Servant Leadership Award goes to Holly Johnson.
You already saw how she was serving. Right. Congratulations, Holly. Okay.
Okay. Anyhow, okay. Yes. So since you're standing up here, everybody can come back. Okay. And then um come in now. Are you returning your seat? Can you tell everybody? Yes, 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 okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And I'm gonna go get the seat. Okay. Testing, testing. Ready? All right, everyone, please return to your seats. Please return to your seats. Thank you.
All right, we're gonna continue on with the long white coat ceremony portion of our program. We would like to transition to the white coat ceremony por portion. The white coat ceremony is traditionally a rite of passage, welcoming you as new PAs into the medical profession. This ceremony will join the symbol of the white coat with the virtues of humanity, responsibility, duty, honor, respect, and compassion. Let your white coat be a reminder of your professional duties to lead your lives and practice your art with honesty, honor, integrity, and excellence. Your coat today is long to, to symbolize your new role as a healthcare provider. As I call your name, please come forward and be coded by your loved ones. Nazia Ashik. Coded by her husband, Asif Chata, and her son, Hassan Chata. Yubong Atiata, coded by his father, Raymond Atiata, and mother, Colette Atiata. Okay. Joe Bolanos. Quoted by his mom, Maria Prado. Leanne Boosmail, <laughs> coded by her father, David Boosmail, and her mother, May Boosmail. Miguel Cespedes Sandoval, <laughs> coded by his wife, Alicia Corona, and daughter, Mia Cespedes, and son, Adrian Cespedes. Mark Cooper, coded by his mother, Alice Cooper, and grandmother, Bernice Cooper. Thank you. 
Charity is a mama. Coded by her son, Paul Eziamama, and pastor, Grace Pam. R.G. Florentino, coded by her father, Andrew Florentino. Gas Kukiao. Coded by. Coded by his son, Nehemiah, and his parents, Mr. Mike Johnson and Miss Barbara Johnson. Habib Helmandi. Coded by his mother, Shah Helmandi. Denise Jackson, coded by her mother, Marcia Williams, and her sister, Julissa Jackson. Daphne Joseph, coded by coded by her sisters Maud Joseph and Santi 
Fenta, Fentil. Jamila Mitchell Johnson, coded by her fourth grade teacher, teacher, Kasha. Rajpreet Kaur, coded by her father, Hanjit Sandhu, and mother, Harmjit Sandhu. Carly Kelleher, coded by her father, Dr. Matthew Kelleher. Jesse Ken. Voted by partner, Jaden Nguyen. Janie Lamb. Coded by her dad, Peter Lamb, and brother, Cos Lamb. Alvin Liao. Coded by his father, James Liao, and fiance, Christina Take. Matthew Lloyd. Coded by his father, U.S. Coast Guard Captain Barkley Lloyd and his mother, U.S. Coast Guard Reserve Captain Marie Lloyd. Grace Mardikian, <laughs> coded by her father, Moses Mardikian, and her mother, Annie Mardikian. Samantha Minkowitz, <laughs> coded by her father, Jaroslaw Minkowitz, and her mother, Medelia Minkowitz.
Blanca Morales Perez. Coded by her mother, Elvira Perez, and dad, Antonio Varela. Jonathan Neighbor. Coded by his mother, Wendy Neighbor. David Onoki. Coded by his brother, Donald Onoki. Sophia Ramirez, coded by her aunt Maggie and her mom, Teresa Salcedo. Congratulations. All right. The white coat suits you guys. All right, class of 2022, uh, would you rise? Right, you guys too. Are you going to follow after me? Just repeat what I have to say. Um, we're going to take the pledge to know CDU specific. Okay, just follow after me. In joining a long tradition of change makers within CDU's physician assistant program. I hereby pledge to become a medical provider who seeks social justice. Promotes wellness and provides care with excellence and compassion. I embrace the quest to transform the health of underserved populations. Through outstanding education, research, and clinical services. And the context of community whenever and wherever I find myself practicing medicine. I pledge commitment to lifelong and self-directed learning. All right, class 2022. Congratulations. I know you too, Matt. How's it going? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, my name is David Onoki. I had the privilege of being class president over the last 27 months. It's 
quite a journey, let me assure you. Um, on behalf of the cohort, I just want to thank everybody for being here, whether that's physically or virtually. Um, it takes a village to get through PA school, and each of you are part of our village. I want to start by taking a moment to show appreciation and gratitude for everybody that made today possible. From our professors and faculty who have worked tirelessly over the last 27 months with us, so I know that was a bit of a challenge from time to time, to make our time at Drew a success, to our friends, families, and loved ones who have sacrificed just as much with us. We may be walking across the stage alone, but we carry each of you with us wherever we go. As our time at Drew ends and the dawn of a new chapter in our lives begins, it's only fitting we take a moment to reflect upon our time here. Our cohort truly had a unique experience that may never again be replicated. The embarkment of our journey was marred by a worldwide pandemic that forever changed the world. It was only a few short months into 2020 that we embarked that we began the already monumental task of PA school. Before vaccines and widespread testing, and at a critical time when we were first forming our bonds, we were limited to Zoom socials and group chats. I'm sure you guys remember those. When we were supposed to be sitting in class, and perhaps more importantly, spending time with each other between classes, we were taking them largely virtually. I commend Drew for the extraordinary efforts to make our PA experience the best it could be given the circumstances, but some things you just can't replicate virtually. Our experiences underscored the importance of connection both to each other and to a larger vision and purpose. What a valuable lesson to learn during PA school. Simply put, we had to work harder to find creative ways to bond, and it is because of this that we are empowered with creative, we are empowered with the wisdom of its importance and the tools to achieve it in an ever-changing world. Having accomplished what we have during this particular moment in history is something we should undoubtedly be proud of. I hope each of you never forgets just how strong you are. Pause for dramatic effects. A great parable some of you may be familiar with demonstrates the power of connection. An observer happened upon three workers to whom he asked, what are you doing? The first responded, I'm laying bricks to feed my family. The second, I'm a builder. I'm building a church. The third, I'm building the house of God. The first has a job, the second a career, the third has a calling. You see, the importance of how we see our work and how it connects to our inner values is what transforms a job or a career into a calling. I hope we, from time to time, reflect upon our inner values and what drew us to answer the call of becoming a healer. I've done a lot of reflecting upon how we can pay back those who paved the way for us, and I've come to the conclusion that the only way we can begin to do that is to continue to pay it forward. Dr. Sylvia Drew Ivey once remarked to us about the unbroken chain that we're all a part of in medicine, and I believe continuing that chain, as those before us have done, is only the truth is the only true way that we can honor them. So I encourage my fellow classmates to continue that tradition and reach out with one hand and then the other and take as many people as we can along with us, especially people of color and underrepresented minorities. It is a sad but irrefutable truth that there continues to be underrepresentation of minorities in medicine and being indifferent to this reality only benefits the status quo. I believe to live up to the CDU vision statement of achieving excellent health and wellness for all in a world without health disparities, we are obligated to be active in our advocacy, not only for our patients, but to change what medicine looks like and make this vision a reality for our communities. I am beyond excited to follow each of your careers and see what we accomplish. Will we kick down doors like Professor Williams and get PAs into new spaces? Will we challenge the future students and teach them to think critically like Professor Comini? Or will we look after the children and make sure they grow up healthy and thrive like Prof G? Only time will tell, but I know whatever the future holds, the communities we practice in will shine all the brighter due to our presence in them. Thank you.
And now I have the honor of introducing somebody who's been an instrumental part to our success and somebody who's been, quite frankly, an absolute pleasure to work with, our Vice President, Carly Kelleher. Life is full of certainties. It is certain that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It is certain that as humans, in order to function, we must sleep. It is certain that without a heartbeat, there is no life. But for every certainty, there is an equal and opposite uncertainty that plagues us. The weather, our health, the future, all uncertain. When I began my journey at Charles Drew, the fear of uncertainty loomed over me like a shadow I couldn't escape. In undergrad, I was a dance major. I know, very different from medicine. Prior to pursuing a career as a PA, I hadn't taken a science class since high school. So inevitably, I was filled with uncertainty regarding my aptitude for success. Was I qualified to be here? Could I really excel as a PA? How the heck am I going to get through this? I know I wasn't alone in these feelings. As a class, our journey towards getting here, sharing this space on graduation day has been entirely unique to us. When we started this journey in August of 2020, we were still adjusting to the new normal of life in COVID-19. We essentially completed all of our schooling online and were forced to bond with our professors and classmates via screens and Zoom rather than in person. Over the past 27 months as a cohort, we have straddled this fine line between certain and uncertain. Will I pass this exam? I know I will, but do I truly understand this material? Is my patient comfortable? I think so, but have I diagnosed them correctly? As students, we have done everything in our power to chip away at the fear of uncertainty. And yet at times it still looms over us. I remember our very first lecture of PA school. Monday morning, 9 a.m., human anatomy with Dr. Kuo. He was talking a million miles a minute, ferociously naming all the bones and muscles of the head and neck and their blood supply and respective innervations. When the three hour lecture ended, I logged out of Blackboard and I thought to myself, oh boy, what did I just get myself into? And don't get me started with our patient history and physical exams. I have vivid memories of preparing for the ophthalmic eye exam, well into the late hours of the night, desperately searching for the optic disc, <laughs> nearly blinding all of my willful volunteers. How am I going to be a PA if I can't even find the optic disc? I tearfully exclaimed to my partner. Thankfully, Professor Pate calmed my irrational fears by letting me know it's not just you. Every student struggles with this. It's nearly impossible to find the optic disc without dilating drops. Good to know. How about Dr. Martin's lectures? I think we can all relate to that sinking feeling, staring at our computer screens, anxiously waiting to be called upon and praying that we knew the correct answer. Every week, like clockwork, Dr. Martin's would make his way down the list. David, are you ready to steer the ship home, Captain? Let's do it, Dr. Martins, he would confidently reply. Dr. Martins has always pushed us beyond what we thought we were capable of. In fact, when our cohort met him for the very first time, he told us, PA school is like drinking out of a fire hydrant. If we didn't know what that meant at the time, we surely do now. And let me tell you, drinking out of a fire hydrant is very, very difficult. Although at the time, these challenges felt insurmountable, we found a way to overcome them. All the trials and tribulations we faced along the way have helped us build the grit and stamina needed to persevere. With time, Dr. Quo's lectures started to feel more manageable. Patient history and physical exams became second nature and Dr. Martin's weekly quizzes, a challenge we were prepared to conquer. We have spent countless hours in clinic, class, studying, and preparing ourselves to go forth into the community 
as compassionate and capable providers. Together as a cohort, we have turned these uncertainties into certainties. I can confidently say that I am certain we all deserve to be here. I am certain that we have put in the time and effort necessary to graduate from this demanding and rigorous program. And finally, I am certain that all 25 of us truly are going to make a difference in this world. In this moment, standing here in front of you all today, I feel 100% certain about so many of the things that in the past undoubtedly brought me a great deal of uncertainty. And certainty, that is an incredible feeling. I've come to the realization, however, that uncertainty isn't necessarily a negative emotion. When you have a dream, uncertainty quickly shifts to motivation, the will to succeed, determination, and most importantly, curiosity. As the great Albert Einstein once said, I'm neither clever nor especially gifted. I'm only very, very curious. And in the words of another great scholar, Taylor Swift, I've never been a natural. All I do is try, try, try. So I give you this challenge, my dear friends and colleagues, never lose that curiosity and never stop trying even in the face of uncertainty, because I'm certain that in the end, you will all be more than fine. To the class of 2022, cheers, we did it. Next up in the program, we have our class farewell video created by the one and only Samantha Minkowitz. I want to give a major shout out and thank you for Sam for all the time and effort she put into this video. Despite everything else on her plate, she worked tirelessly to get this done for the cohort. So without further ado, our class video. of the nervous system. I, I know you're going to feel like we, we are like um, overwhelmed with information. Um, think positive, this is PA program. I mean, it's a nice idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, this is Nazi Ashri. I would like to thank my amazing husband and children, wonderful classmates, CDU faculty members and staff for believing in me and making PA school one of the best experiences of my life. Thank you so much for your kindness and support. I couldn't have done it without you. What's up, y'all? It's Yubong Asiata, aka Mr. Melo. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to my family and my friends for supporting me through this past two years. PA school was rough. I'm glad I made it through. And shout out to my classmates, we did it y'all. Class of 2022, let's go. Hi, this is Leanne Boosmail. I just wanted to say a special thank you to my friends and family for supporting me throughout this entire journey. I love you all so much. And to my CDU family and support system, I couldn't have thanked you enough for this opportunity of a lifetime. I'm looking forward to the next chapter, but I'm gonna miss you all so much. Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Cespedes and I wanted to thank 
my wifey, Alicia, my three kids, my princess, my tanky man, and my jelly beanie, as well as my family for helping me through this entire process. And to class of 2022, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? It's Mark Jr. checking in. Uh, first, I'd like to give a thanks to God for providing me with this unique opportunity and then seeing me through this journey with his uh, divine provision. I'd like to give a special thanks to uh, my family for you know your support, uh, your prayers. Uh, you guys have been a tremendous support system for me, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, and always you can think of. Thank you so much for your help. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends as well. Thank you for uh, your constant check-ins, uh, your encouraging words, and your uplift during this time for me as well. I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Charles Drew PA programs, faculty and staff. You guys have been uh, amazing. Uh, thank you for helping me uh, develop my skill set and just bring me into the provider that you know I know I can be. So I'm very grateful for each and every you know professor, uh, staff member who's worked with me. Um, you guys are much appreciated. I'd also like to give a special shout out to class of 2022. Uh, you guys have been awesome. Thank you guys for uh, being great friends uh, over the past two years. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys do great things. My CDUPA journey is a journey of God's faithfulness through all the times and ups and downs is God's faithfulness that made it possible to be here. I'm thankful for my children, support, family, church family, my friends, my classmates, CDU staff at large, and all. Indeed, it took a village. Thank you so much. To all my family, friends, and the faculty at CDU, thank you for all your love, support, and encouragement throughout this journey. You all have really inspired me to be the best version of myself every day. Thank you, everyone. Hi everyone, it's Carly Kelleher. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my family and my fiance Kerrigan. I absolutely could not have made it through PA school without your unwavering support. I love you guys so much. And to the class of 2022, congrats, we did it. Cheers. Thankful for this cohort. Um, I think we all contributed in our own different and unique ways and I probably wouldn't have survived PA school without you guys. And I'm also thankful for the program for providing me an opportunity to give back to my community. Hello everyone, this is Janice Jackson and I wanted to firstly thank God for this amazing journey I've embarked on for the past two years. I would also like to thank my lovely mother for her continuous love and support as well as my little sister. Thank you to all my amazing friends who have been there every step of the way and also thank you to all the CDU staff and faculty for their guidance and assistance throughout this journey. Lastly, congratulations to my fellow classmates. We did it, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. I wanna thank my family and friends for their support throughout PA school, particularly my roommate, Gabby, who practically listened to all of didactic year with us. Thanks for creating up with it. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Love you. Hi, my name is Grace, and I'd like to first start off by thanking God for blessing me with this opportunity and seeing me through every step of this journey. I'd like to thank my parents, my brother, my family, and my friends for your unwavering support throughout these two years. To CDU's faculty and staff, thank you for everything you've done for the cohort. And finally, a special shout out to the class of 2022. I'm so proud of all of us, congratulations. I can't wait to see where we all end up. Hi, I'm Samantha. I want to thank my friends and family for their support. You guys were the wind behind my sails this entire time. And Prof G, thank you for accepting me after my PA school interview. You changed my life completely. Uh, Long Beach crew, you guys already know. Janie, thank you. You either kept me sane or we both completely lost our minds together. And the rest of my CDU classmates. I adore each and every one of you and I could not imagine going through this with anyone else. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Jamila. 
First and foremost, I would like to thank the Charles Drew University staff and faculty for giving me the opportunity to receive an education in their PA program. I would also like to thank my friends and family for supporting me along the way. I am sad to see this chapter close, but so excited for the next chapter. A mi familia, amigos y colegas, gracias por todo su apoyo, sus consejos y su amor incondicional. Sin ustedes no hubiese podido lograr esta meta. Los quiero a todos mucho. We've had our ups and downs, maybe one more than the other, but we've persevered through it all and we should be so proud of ourselves for making it to this point. Thank you to my mom and the PA program and my fellow cohort members for making this possible. Hello to all CDU friends and family. Thank you so much for being here today to celebrate this monumental day with us. My name is Sofia Ramirez and I wanna give a special shout out to those people who have helped me so much along the way. Definitely my mom, my partner, Amanda, Alma, my tia Maggie who flew all the way from Mexico to be here with me today. And of course, my dad. I also wanna give a shout out to the CDU family. Thank you so much for helping me get here. This has been a lifelong dream of mine. Um, and I'm just so happy that this day is finally here. I'm excited to celebrate with all of you guys. I'm here to admit that you were my medicine. Oh, I couldn't quit. And I'm down on my knees again Asking For nothing Thank you for the happiest year of my life Thank you for the happiest year of my life Thank you, class of 2022, for your kind words. Um, you know, we actually had 26 graduates. We forgot little Nehemiah. So congratulations, little Nehemiah. He came to this world during these 27 months, so he deserves to graduate as well. All right. Um, as we come to a close, um, I just want to recognize all the alumni again and invite you to an alumni reception in the PA homeroom. That includes you guys too, you are alumni now. Um, so you can ask your families to give you a few minutes to come in and, uh, and network a little bit and then you can join them again. And I know a lot of people have been thanked but we cannot thank people enough. So I want to give a special thank you to our keynote speaker. Thank you so much, Pierre Reed, for coming all the way.
for your kind words and all the work that you do that resonates very well with what we do at CDU. Uh, our university leadership and all the CDU departments that work every day and support our program so that we can be successful. Our faculty and staff, amazing, amazing people. They work so hard. You know, it's, it's a rigorous program for the students, but it also means it's a rigorous program for the faculty and staff. Uh, and so they work so they work so hard every day to make this happen. And this event uh, was put together by the special work of two special people, Holly and Stephanie. So let's thank them. And I, I also want to thank our, our first year and second year students out there, right? Thank you for coming to celebrate uh, with, your, with your fellow students and to see what uh, it will be like next year and the year after. I hope you're inspired. And a very special thank you to the friends and families of the graduates for supporting them, cooking for them, babysitting for them, uh, giving them a, a shoulder to cry on. Um, you know, during the short white coat ceremony, we told you to excuse them from birthdays, weddings, family events. Uh, now you can have them back. If they don't come to the events, they can't blame us anymore, okay? I owe, I owe, and so to work I go. A few years, years ago, my sister and I attended a um, Joyce Meyer conference. Uh, Joyce Meyer, for those who may not know, is uh, this famous preacher who has written a lot of inspiring books. And she kept saying these words in one of her sermons. She just kept saying, I owe, I owe, and so to work I go. Now, she was talking about people who live above their means, you know, get a big house, an expensive car, go on expensive vacations. And so they put themselves in financial debt. And so every day in the morning, in the highways, you see this uh, line of cars going towards work saying, I owe, I owe, and so to work I go, right? Today, I'm not talking about financial debt. Your class in 2020 had 3,853 applicants. And 25 of you are sitting here today. So all the, all the others, many of them probably did not make into uh, any PA school. Many of them will never get an opportunity to sit in that chair. So don't take it for granted that you were selected. Sitting in that chair today is a privilege. It is a debt. So you owe it to your patients, to your families, to CDU, to your communities, to society, to be excellent and unique and to provide excellent medical care to everyone in the context of social justice and with a commitment to eliminate health disparities. So every day when you go to work, remember, I owe, I owe, and so to work, I go. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2022. I'm <laughs> 
Thank you. 